So Manoj, most people know you as the founder of the Five Hour Energy Drink. You were also a monk for 12 years and you've recently been in the news for pledging to give 99% of your wealth to tackle some of the most pressing issues in the world today, primarily focusing on access to clean water and the innovations from global to even locally in the States with all the utilities. What exactly is your vision of clean water for billions and how have you impacted people's lives so far? Whatever climate change does, the one thing, the largest thing that we believe that it'll do is affect water availability, right? So uh, we looked at it and said, how can we fix it? And so we went and worked on it for years and years to come up with stuff that would solve the problems for communities, for cities, for countries, for everybody. Right? What would that take? So we did come up with stuff that is, it had to have design stuff that was really, that would work everywhere. So we made a modular system. So you can do a community or you know, neighborhood. You, actually, you can even do a house. You can do industry. You can do city. In fact, we're in the middle of a um, our, our uh, main city, we're going to look at one city in India, a small city, but their water is horrible. It's all brackish and it's terrible. Can't drink it. All water is trucked in. Um, that's a small town. So it's about, I think, uh, 50,000 people. Um, so what we're going to do is fix every well to make the water so that they can drink it and use it for whatever else they want. Okay. So that's our, our mission in the water side is to make that happen. The newest things that are happening to us is we're realizing part of it, water is very political. You know, as soon as you say water, you know, and politicians jump in. So it's more difficult um, not, because it's not front and center, uh, unlike climate change. Climate change is very popular. Nobody knows what the hell they're talking about, but it's very popular. Um, water, on the other hand, is not yet. But the area that it's getting there and that makes some sense is water reclamation. So, for example, there are industries that use millions of gallons a day, right? We can reduce their usage by 80 to 90 percent by reclaiming the wastewater. Um, for example, even people like Coke or Pepsi who sell you a drink, for every 12 ounces that they sell you, they use 36 ounces of water to get that 12. We can half their waste. We can, we can actually take most of their waste away, 70, 80% of their waste. So the one big thing that's going to happen in utilities is and a lot of the utilities, the water utilities have already said so. Uh, a lot of the companies have said, okay, we're going to start a big factory here. And they built the factory. And then they said to the utility, um, we're going to need a couple million gallons uh, a day. And I know of utilities who've given them a one word answer. No, <laughs> you're not getting it. So I think that problem is going to continue. A uh, couple of reasons. One, they don't have the capacity to do it. Uh, and second, there's just going to be scarcity. I mean, look at even in the United States. Worldwide, it's much bigger. But even in the United States, half of Texas is, you know, a third of Texas has gone back to the desert. You know, Southwest is suffering. And we can solve all of that by actually uh, uh, turning brackish water into usable drinking water as well as agriculture. So that's our, our, our view and our mission. Um, now, this is a 20 year mission because uh, politicians will always be involved in water. So I don't, I don't you know, it's not like, okay, um, we need to make money at this and we need to, I don't care. Um, it's we're inventing to solve a problem that's gonna be decades and decades, right? To me, it's the most important project in the world right now. Um, how do human beings survive, right? 
I mean, to me, climate change is a little bit like your houses on fires half burnt down and somebody saying, well, better get to the store and get a fire extinguisher. <laughs> it's a little late. Uh, the first thing you should be worried about is where are you going to sleep tonight? So that's what really this is about, is humanity and their requirements for surviving after this climate change affects the world. So that's that's our mission. That's kind of a long-winded approach. but Absolutely. And your product, it's a modular water cleaning device. Um, could you have any stories of when you've implemented it? Um, sure. Sure. I mean, uh, as far as implementation, the guys who are on the front of uh, technology usage for water are the marijuana guys. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because, you know, they have all kinds of constraints on them. They have to make it work and they have to be better and the quality has to be right. So and nobody wants to give them anything. Right. There's no state saying, oh, let me support you. You're putting a factory plant here. Let me support you. No, nobody's doing that. In fact, they're saying uh, you can't use the bank. You can't do this. You can't do that. So they have to be the most end of it. And they are sort of the cutting edge of, of that. So our biggest, one of our bigger pushes right now, which if we fell into it because people wanted it, is what's controlled, what's called, everything has a fancy name now. You know, there's always a fancy name. Controlled environment agriculture, also known as greenhouse. <laughs> it used to be called just a greenhouse. Now it's called controlled agri controlled environment agriculture, right? Which uh, is actually uh, food security. If you can do that and recycle ninety percent of the water, you don't have a food problem. Right? That's where we're headed. In fact, uh, this is off topic right now, but a few seconds is that uh, we've started this project in India, which we're looking for land right now, uh, and, the, and, the, and the government is giving us land, is to start a university, and its only purpose is going to be, in other words, you know, there's specialized universities like MIT's engineering and blah, 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 and whatever. This is going to be a university for only for water and food security technology. You know, to me, this is the most important subject there is, and there's not a course anywhere in the world, let alone a university anywhere in the world. So we're gonna do that. And we've been working on it quite a bit, um, research-wise, to all the infrastructures that's required for food. You know, not only grow it, use less water, make it the most productive, store it, all of that stuff, the whole uh, and the environment that comes with it. So we're gonna be putting that up and you know, hopefully in the next year or two. So that's our, our you know, we're looking at big long-term projects. Um, I, I probably expect not to make money on any of this ever. Um, I'm sure I'll be dead by then, which is fine. Uh, but this is this is meant to do something useful every day, right? That's our purpose: is to do something really. We have fascinating projects going on right now that are are. I can tell you about the latest one. The week week ago, again, it's off topic, but it is water. Is that we figured out a way to have hydration drinks without salt or sugar. Okay, and water actually lasts if you drink it. It'll last like a couple of hours for hydration. Ours will last six hours. So it absorbs the water and keeps it there. And it's made of ultra pure water. So it has no anything. You know, no lead, no this, no PFAS, no, uh, it's ultra pure water. It's the same level of water that you would use on an IV. Is that, um, that like was spring the, water or did you filter it? No, no, what it is, it's actually an accident because uh, we made this water unit, right? Which was for the world to have filtration. And we found out that with a slight adjustment, we can make what's called de deionized water, which is so pure. It's totally pure water. There's nothing in it, right? 
And then what we did was say, well, we're going to throw in, uh, what if we, one of the properties of really, really pure water is it absorbs everything. And so what we did, we said, what if we threw some electrolytes in it? What would happen? And all of a sudden, it was this, you don't even need salt and sugar to do hydration. So it'll be the largest drink for everybody that's old and everybody that has uh, diabetes or high blood pressure, which is like, I don't know, half a billion people. You know, it's a, the numbers are staggering. So it'll be a, a way for uh, a lot of people to drink half as much and be twice as hydrated. <laughs> so we're working on a lot of projects that are water related <laughs> to some extent. Right. So you created five hour energy, but now it's five hour water. I <laughs> know, <laughs> uh, no, yeah, I know, but I can't call it that. <laughs> so, you got any questions? Any ideas? Any thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. So, you mentioned the importance of agriculture, and I know there's lots of issues with climate change impacting agriculture and people having to migrate to other countries because of the heat, and perhaps they don't have the most smart fertilizer or water systems. Um, could you talk to some of your stories around agriculture and how utilities might get involved to help? Well, in the end, I think utilities still need water to do anything with. If you don't have water, the basic source of water, there's nothing you can do, right? The other thing with utilities is going to be to, to at some point, not today, at some point, they're going to make you reclaim the water because they don't have it to give you when you know all the reservoirs are drying up. What do you think you're going to do? The thing you have to do is reclaim the water, not waste it. That's one. And the second is uh, there is water available. We've sucked up most of the freshwater groundwater that's freshwater. Uh, I mean, you know, as you know, in California, it's fallen like four feet. The whole state has fallen four feet, bridges, roads, because they sucked up all the water uh, from underground. And what do you think was going to happen? Everything sucks. It went down. So they've taken so much of that water. The question is, we need sources of water. And the largest source of water that is easier to convert to fresh water for agriculture is going to be brackish water. You can't take seawater. Uh, it, it's it's a ridiculous idea. I mean, I had that I had that idea actually for, and then I thought, oh my god, talk about bureaucrats and politicians. This would be, do you know, it, to put a desal plant together, it takes twenty years. Um, just permitting is seven years, eight years, and then you've got all sides of other problems. What do you what do you throw all that really heavily salted water? Now you have fish and bugs and whatever else that that becomes endangered um so uh, desalination is not an answer at all but brackish water we can do brackish water off a device that's the size of a washing machine whereas desalination plants are you know hundreds of acres and billions of dollars and you know all that stuff so i i think the utilities in the end are going to have to look for source of water and the only source of water really is either you reclaim it and you make your customers do it, or you take brackish water and turn it into fresh water. I think that's 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 yeah, that's the only answer. Right. And do you have any final words that you'd like to leave people on, or, or how can people follow your actions and what you're doing? <laughs> It's kind of hard to follow what we're doing because we don't publicize it. <laughs> um, I'm not I'm not Elon that gets on Twitter every day. I'd rather just, uh, um, you know, I much prefer toiling in obscurity. <laughs> you know, just do the work. So we're we're doing the work, and it'll be for the future. When it'll be really big, I don't know. But one day it will be giant because it's the most important thing there is. So. Um, we currently are aiming at, so we can also fund, I mean, if I do a city, I don't have obviously enough wealth to do all, all the cities. There's no one, no one has that much money. Um, 
So what we're doing is uh, taking the easiest shot, which is really commercial. So uh, there is a movement, you know, everything is by fashion, you know, even business moves by fashion, ESG, this, that, the other. So right now there's a fashion, okay, what are you doing? You're wasting all this water, what are you doing? So there is some movement to say, hey, can we reclaim this? Uh, can we use, especially in industry, that's gonna be the biggest area. Uh, and some of it is driven by straight cost because the utilities are saying, fine, you give us this, all this dirty water, we're gonna pound you, which they should. Uh, and so there, it's driven by that. That uh, So I think the utilities to some extent are gonna say, there's a way to reclaim your water. Why are you giving it to us? Your dirty water, why are you giving it to us? You know, and if you're gonna do it, we're gonna charge you a zillion dollars a gallon. Um, I think that's the direction that is is uh, is obvious. This isn't predicting the future. Predicting the future would be, would if you have wet wood and you light it on fire, it's not a prediction to say you're gonna get smoke, right? You already have the wet wood and you already have light, lit the fire. This is going to happen. There is no, there's no way around it. Unless they, if somebody figures out a way to invent water, to create water, which is uh, not happening. Right? Yeah. Just pull it out That's, of the air. <laughs> huh? Just pull, pull it out of the out air. Of the air. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, there are 50, maybe 100 guys doing that. Yeah. And all they end up with is a glass of water. And I'm like, I, they come to me all the time. And I, I say, <laughs> are you kidding me? I, I, for a glass of water, I got to do all of this stuff? No, it has to be scale. You got to do agriculture. You got to do cities and towns. It's cute mm -hmm. to pull. And then, of course, you could go to the desert and let's see how much you pull. <laughs> so that's just kidding around. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure talking to you today, and I'm excited to see where some of your ventures go and all of the work you're doing. It's fantastic. Um, looking you. forward to talking in the future again.